Hello people, welcome, welcome to my video once again. I am Bharat Acharya. Today I am going to teach you this fabulous instruction of 8086 called as XL80. We are doing this series of 8086 instructions. Uh, I have uploaded a few videos and I am going to put a few more. I can't cover all the instructions, there are too many, but at least a few important ones I am doing. So the links for the other videos are already there, they will be there in the description section. Anyways, now let's start. There is this instruction called XL80. If you see, if you look up 8086 exam papers, you will see this instruction a lot. It's one of the most popular instructions. Now, why do they like to ask this instruction so much? See, there are some instructions like add, subtract, multiply, divide. Even if you haven't really studied them, you can just look at them and guess what they do. But an instruction like this, XL80, if you've not studied it before, there's no way you can figure out what it does. And once you know what it does, you'll be amazed. It's a wonderful instruction, again, tremendous application in the real world. Look, let's start. Uh, so now, how do you pronounce XLAT? XLAT is pronounced as translate. The X is a short form for trans, so it's pronounced as translate. What does this instruction mean? When you write XLAT, AL register gets the data from data segment from an offset address given by BX plus AL. Once again, who gets the data? AL. From which segment? Data segment from an offset address given by BX plus AL. From a location given by BX plus AL. So that's it, that's all that this instruction does. So how is it called translate? Look here, wonderful idea. Suppose we look at a seven segment display. Everybody knows how a seven segment display works. There are seven segments, it can be used as seven LEDs. They are called A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you have a point, like some displays have a fraction. So if you have a point, that point will be etched. Most displays don't have that. So you have not included that. Now, in this display, if you want to display one, if you want to show one on this display, you don't send one to the display. You send a code, a pattern that will activate B and C, will turn them on and the others should be turned off. Okay. Now, if they are all active high triggers, triggers can be either active high or active low. In displays, they are called common cathode and common anode. Anyways, keeping it simple, if they are all active high triggers, B and C should be activated. So B and C should be one, the others should be zero. So if you see the number that is formed, that is 0, 06 in hexadecimal. So if you send 0, 06 to this display, it ends up displaying 1. So 0, 06 is called the 7 segment code of 1. Are we clear? Similarly, there will be a 7 segment code of 2, there will be a 7 segment code of 5, 9, etc. Every digit has its 7 segment code. Now suppose you're doing a program for something like a remote control or for a lift or for a traffic signal where you have these counters as displays. You need to display every new digit all the time, which means you need their seven segment codes all the time. Now these seven segment codes are never going to change. So instead of generating them by some formula, they are simply stored in the memory. The seven segment codes of all digits from zero to nine are stored in the memory, in the data segment, in the form of a table, such a table which is used for reference is called as a look up table. I repeat, look up table because you always look at the table for reference, hence the name look up table. So this look up table has codes, seven segment codes of 0, 1, 2, blah, 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 up to 9. Let's say this look up table begins in the data segment at some offset address, let's say 4000. Now notice something very interesting over here. Come on, 4000 contains the code of 0. 4001 contains the code of 1, 4002 contains the code of 2, 4009 contains the code of 9. So, if you want the code of 5 randomly, suppose you decide you want to display 5, so you want the code of 5, where is it stored? 4005. A little different way of looking at it is stored at 4000 plus 5. If you want the code of 9, it is stored at 4000 plus 9. So, if you want the code of X, it is stored at 4000 plus X, which means the address that you want to go to can be formed by adding two numbers. One of them is 4000, that's your base address. The other is your index, which is 5 in this case. So, we initialize BX with the value 4000. We initialize AL with the number which we want to translate. I repeat, to display 5, you don't want 5, you want the code of 5. So that means you want to translate 5 into its own code. So we put 5 in AL. So that when we do BX plus AL, BX plus AL, we go to the location from where we will get the code of 5. To take an example, suppose you want the code of 5, this is how you do it in program. 
you initialize BX with the value 4000. You put the number 5 which you want to translate in air. And then you write your magic instruction translate. It's so sublime. It works like magic. Look here. Before this instruction, AL, at this point, AL was 5, the number you want to translate. After this instruction, what happens? Who gets the data? AL, from which segment? Data set. From the location pointed by BX plus AL. BX plus AL is 4005. What are you getting? Contents of 4005, which means you're getting the code of 5. Before this instruction, AL was 5. After this instruction, AL becomes code of 5. So the number that you put in AL gets translated into its own code. Hence the name translate. I hope you understood this. Suppose now, after displaying 5, you decide that you want to display 9. What do you do? Move, yeah, no, no, no. You don't try to move BX comma 4000 every time. BX is initialized only once. That's the pointer to your tail. You simply move AL comma 0 9 H and your magic instruction translates. So sublime. You want the code of 7. Move AL comma 0 7 H. Translate. All you need to do is any number that you want to translate, put that number in AL, write the word translate and the number gets translated. That's what this instruction is. That's why it's so popular. Please understand. Any kind of display needs its codes. Whether it's 7 segment codes, whether they're ASCII codes, whether they're LCD codes, they are all stored in lookup tables. All you need to do is once, only once, initialize BX with the starting address of the lookup table. Thereafter, any number that you want to translate, just put the number in AL, write translate, the number will be translated. There are two forms of this instruction. There is XLATB and there is XLAT. XLATB works exactly the way I've shown you. X in XLAT, you can specify the address of the lookup table. If you don't specify, it is assumed that the address is given by BX register. If you specify, then you can specify any address that you want. That's the difference between the two. So this is the implied form of the instruction. This is the direct form of the instruction where you give the address yourself. Address of the lookup table, the starting address. That's what translate does. Like this, there are 68 different forms of instructions in 8086. Uh, I can't cover all of them in videos. Many of them are pretty simple. Many of them are too big to be covered as a video. They are all there in my book as I keep saying. This book is made with a lot of love. It contains everything that a person would want to know as a student of 8086. Everything that you'd want to know to study this processor and beyond. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's available on Kindle. It's uh, also coming up on Apple Store very soon. Okay, uh, that's about it. I'll be putting more videos as and when I can. Uh, thank you so much for all the appreciation, all the likes. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, keep giving me suggestions. That just encourages me to do more. Wish you all the best. Do it.